Hi everyone, I'm Steph. How are you today? Do you remember last week when we went outside to learn more about God's plants and animals with our magnifying glasses? This week we're back to spend more time thinking about how to look after God's world really well. But first, we're going to spend a bit of time worshipping God with some singing and dancing. Wasn't that great? Another way we can worship God is by reading the Bible. Do you guys remember the memory verse from last week? Why don't we say it together and remember the actions? Let's go. God, you let us rule everything your hands have made and you put it all under our power. The sheep, ah, <laughs> the cattle, and every wild animal. The birds in the sky, the fish in the sea, and all the ocean creatures. <laughs> Our Lord and Ruler, your name is wonderful everywhere on earth. And that's from Psalm 8, verses 6 to 9. Did you guys remember it? Please send us a video, we'd love to see it. We're spending four weeks thinking about how God made and loves everything, and how he's asked us to rule over it. Remember, that means working out how to take really good care of it. And science is a great way to learn more about the world around us and how to look after it well. For example, did you know that some animals can produce their own light? Take a look at this anglerfish. The female anglerfish has a special fin that grows out of her face. And there's a little bit on the end of that that can glow to attract the fishes that she eats. That's so weird and wonderful. And she's not the only animal that can produce light. Look at this picture. These are fireflies. And look at these. These are bioluminescent plankton. Wow, aren't they amazing? We might not be quite as weird and wonderful as the anglerfish. We can't make our own light. We usually use light bulbs, like these. Did you know that light bulbs and lots of other things we use in our houses, like kettles, TVs, toasters and laptops, use power that we call electricity? Lots of our electricity comes from burning coal and oil and gas, things we call fossil fuels. And we often use those same fuels to do things like heat our homes and to cook with. Do you remember from the video we watched last week that burning too much of these fossil fuels can be bad for God's world? We're going to do some thinking today about how we can reduce the amount of fossil fuel that we use for the electricity and other things we do in our homes. One of the really exciting things is that science has helped us find ways of making electricity which don't need to burn fossil fuels and don't create greenhouse gases. These new methods use the power of the wind or the power of the waves or even the light from the sun to create electricity. And we call energy that comes from these sources green energy because it's better for God's world. Do you know what a wind turbine is? They're like giant versions of a little windmill that you might have in your garden. They have huge blades which are pushed around by the wind and they turn the power of the wind into electricity. 
And what about solar panels? They gather the sun's energy and turn that into electricity for our homes and businesses. You might even have some of those on the roof of your house. It might be that some of the electricity that you use at home already comes from these green energy sources, or maybe at least some of it does, but it's not always possible to use green energy sources just yet. Scientists are doing the best they can to make it possible for as many people as possible to use them though. Maybe you could ask your parents where the electricity you use in your house comes from. But even if we can't always use green energy, there are lots of things we can do to make sure we use less electricity, no matter where it comes from. And we're gonna think about that a little bit later on. But first, Lizzie, do you need this? Thanks, Cara. Today, we're gonna to do a really exciting experiment where we create our own electricity using potatoes. How do you think that's gonna work? Well, we've actually sent you some bits in your activity pack so that after church, you can have a go yourselves. And in order to do this, you're gonna need one big potato that you can cut into three, or three smaller potatoes. You'll also need some silver-colored nails. These are coated in a kind of metal called zinc. You'll need three copper nails that are kind of orangey colored. You need four of these cables that have little clips on the end. And you need a little LED, which is a bit like a tiny light bulb. And we're gonna make our electricity to light up that LED. Now the way that we do this doesn't work because potatoes are full of electricity, but by putting our two different types of metal into our potato, we can draw out of it the thing that makes electricity, which is a flow of tiny particles called electrons going around what we call a circuit made of wires. So to start this, we're gonna take one of each kind of nail, one of our zinc coated nail and one of our copper nails, and we're gonna stick them into one of our potatoes. You need to be careful with this because they're spiky so you might want to get an adult to help you. Now you can poke them both into a potato, make sure they don't come out the other side, and make sure that they're not touching inside the potato. They wanna be about a centimetre or two apart. Now when we put these into the potato, our zinc coated nail starts to react with something in the potato that's called acid. And it undergoes a chemical reaction, which means that electrons are released. And if we connect up those two different types of metal with one of our wires, then we create a circuit that allows electrons to flow around from our zinc nail to our copper one. So we've created an electric circuit, but we want to see it working. And the way we do that is by putting our little LED into the circuit. So I'm gonna need another wire here and to get a different coloured one. So I've got one connected to my zinc nail, one connected to my copper nail, and then I need to connect them to my LED. Now there's a bit here we have to be careful with because this LED has two little legs made of metal and we need to very gently bend them apart a little bit. And then the wire that's connected to my silver coloured nail, I'm gonna clip on the other end to the shorter leg and the wire connected to my copper coloured nail I'm going to clip onto the longer leg. Now, this LED hasn't lit up yet. That doesn't mean I've done it wrong, but what it does show us is that one potato doesn't have enough oomph to make our LED light up. And that's why we've got three, because we checked this and three is the perfect number. So what we're going to do is put our two nails into each of our other potatoes and we're gonna connect them all up with our wires. And we're gonna make sure that the wires go from a silver nail to a copper nail. So that's one there. The next one going from a silver nail to a copper nail. And then I've got one more on the end. So all of my potatoes are connected up. All of my wires are connecting them up silver to copper or coming to the LED. Now remember the wire connected to a silver nail, we clip onto the shorter leg and the wire connected to a copper nail, I'm gonna clip onto the longer leg. But so that we can definitely see what's happening, 
We're going to turn off the lights and we're going to look right down this LED to see whether we can see it light up. We've created an electric circuit using potatoes. Now, if it didn't exactly work for you, there's a few things you can try. First of all, make sure that you've got your, your wires clipped onto the right legs of your LED. Make sure that you've followed all of the steps properly. And if that's still not working, maybe try it with a different potato. It works best when they're good and fresh and juicy. I hope it worked for you. Can you maybe send us in some pictures of your potatoes lighting up your LED? We'd love to see them. Do remember that electricity can be really dangerous. There's such a tiny amount that we're making that it's okay for us to touch them. But the electricity you use in your houses is a lot more powerful, so don't ever play with it. But isn't it amazing to see some of the things that God's world can do? Unfortunately, we can't power our homes using potatoes. So our challenge for this week is to see if we can come up with some other ways to cut down on the amount of electricity that we use at home so that we can take good care of the planet and burn less fossil fuels. We could try to turn lights off when we're leaving a room empty. I'm still here, guys. That's better. Or if you're feeling a bit cold, you could wear a cozy jumper or some of your favourite fluffy socks. Instead of using your computer to play games or instead of watching TV, you could go out for a fun walk in the mud or you could play a board game if the weather's too bad. And did you know that your parents can buy LED light bulbs from the supermarket? They're much better than the old style of light bulb because they use way less electricity. Can you think of any other fun things that you could do to use less electricity at home? Why not let us know what you've come up with? And finally, let's always remember to be thankful for the electricity that we do have and to use it really well. Now remember, it doesn't matter if we don't do things perfectly. God loves it when we give it a go and try our best. God loves it when we have a go at things and we try our hardest. And he loves it when we keep on trying, even if we don't do our best the first time. Remember, these are good things God has given us. And so let's pray as we thank him. Dear God, thank you for all the good things we can enjoy, like heat and light to make our homes warm and cozy in the winter, TV games and computer games, and the wonderful creatures we can learn about and love. Please help us to come up with fun ways to save energy and please help the scientists and governments to work out how to make energy in ways that are really good for your planet. Amen.